Okay, right. It's been a while, but I thought I'd better have a go at designing something in Fusion and mainly soldering iron holders because I've got a couple and they are absolutely awful. Weird. Not sure why the streaming software is not working, but again, we have to fiddle with these things sometimes. No data. This stream will end shortly unless you start sending data to it. Well, I thought there is data going to it. Either it's plain or it's not. I'm sort of waving to myself now to see if I wave back in the thumbnail, but it does seem to be having some sort of trouble, really. I don't know if it's because I've got these new 4K monitors. Hmm. This may be broken. I have upgraded my monitors to 4K. And now it's all a bit strange. It's a bit strange and a bit weird. And uh, OBS, can we scale the output? Is that better? Ah, sorry, Todd. Oh. <laughs> right, so apparently I was visible. Maybe... maybe uh, it's, it's just very odd. It's just YouTube and the streaming software just complaining of not enough bits of data. So I don't know. I don't know if it'll settle down. But how's your Sunday going so far? Mine is, uh, mine's been good. I've gone out for a bit of a walk, had a bit of a tidy, eaten some old Easter egg chocolate. So I can't really complain. And my only uh, stress today is seeing if we can get this software working. Uh, it is again. It's complaining like mad. I think it's it's just not able to achieve the bitrate when it's trying to up upload. So I'm just going to go. Um, I'm going to try to kick it. Let's give it. <laughs> I found one that was not white and crispy right how about now are we seeing is this is is this normal is this a normal looking stream so now the software is saying the bitrate is good it's saying the frame rate is right so maybe just maybe it's working i'm sure you can hear my audio because i can see the vu meter moving and uh I can see in my thumbnail on the YouTube a little bobbing head. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna crack on. I haven't used Fusion now for some time. But I think it's uh, certainly time to get back into it and it's quite easy for me to get back into it. Or rather I have a reason to, to get back into it, which is always the best reason. Because I do do a lot of soldering and I'm not quite sure if you can see this. I'm gonna gonna try to I think I might have a, a way of in what it's broken uh, <laughs> maybe reboot <laughs> reset reload that's the word right so um, yeah I, I did set something up that we should be able to do a whole older these days but the problem is again those those 3d printed real technologies um although quite okay they're a bit flimsy they break and they snag all the time so i want something a bit better for my needs and i thought well why don't we just work it out so to cover with the limitations of this one the the main pro problem with this one that was from thingiverse is that this always falls off so this thing always falls off. So whatever goes through the reel, we want to make sure that it's not able to come off without being unclipped or unscrewed or something. And you can see here, it's completely unable to take hold of these old big big wheels. And this is actually, believe it or not, Weller. 
Well a solder. Didn't know even they made solder. This is crazy. This is 0.3 millimeter solder. You hardly can see that. It's the finest solder I've ever used. Brilliant. Right. So here's fusion. We're gonna have to figure it out. Where would we start with this? I'm gonna guess. Hmm. Why don't we start with the thing that goes through the middle of the soldering loop? And we're gonna have a center point. I'm gonna get my ruler. And I've got these reels in front of me. And you're looking like 20 mil. I think you're right. It is made by Peter Well. <laughs> Your move, punk. <laughs> 20 mil. So I'm going to go for, I think you should always go for a bit smaller. I think 15 diameter is good. And the length. We need, we need, we know this big old solder reel is, let's call it 63 mil. 65 on a good day, right? Let's say it's 65 on a good day. So let's go, we want it 70 plus, let's add a centimeter either side for the housing, 90 millimeters. Did you see that? That massive mental power of that arithmetic I <laughs> did, in, did in my head. We didn't need to get a calculator out. So admittedly, it will seem quite big for these, but let's just do a little measurement, a measurementé. These are about 30. So you could get two of these little reels side by side, which is cool. And then these ones are about 40. So just a bit, you couldn't get two, but they ha it's got plenty of room. So I quite like the idea that you could just sort of stack a few on if you've got some extra space. I mean, mm, it's almost tempting to think that maybe we should be uh, be doing that. Anyway, let's just keep it simple. So how are you guys? Like uh, six, five, eight, one punk. It's been a while. It's been a while, right, since we did a stream, like a million years and I don't know. I just don't know if people watch streams anymore. I mean, YouTube always seemed to penalise me for doing streams. So I kind of went, well, what's the point of doing them? But you do them because they're fun. And it's the weekend. And you kind of want to do stuff with your friends, really. And I consider YouTube buddies friends. So why not? So let's see. If that's nominally 15, so these, these squares are a centimetre each, right? One, two, three, I would say a housing that's from the center, we've got a hole. I think four centimeters out is good. I mean, if we're gonna do something, you could do it like that, but I just need to measure edge to edge now on the reel. So basically how deep is the reel from the edge of, well, let's say for the center point of the hole. I think you're gonna need 40 clear, 40 from the center. And we can go a bit deeper. So I'd say one, two, three, so that's 40. And if we're going to go 40, you can go, I don't know, why don't we go 50? And not, not even worry about it anymore. Um, yeah, why not? So we're going to go 30 across the top, it seems. And 45, go on. We'll use the power of maths. The power of maths compels you. Um, now, hopefully that's a new shape. In fact, I'm going to make sure it's a new body, which it is. Um, carrier command remake. Yeah, I mean, that's really ages ago. And actually, we were talking about that recently because that's a game I want to get into and play multiplayer with um, whoever I can find on the internet who wants to play it because it does look smashing. Now, I don't know. For me, looking at this model on the screen, it just looks wrong, but... I may have measured something incorrectly, but let's just keep going. So that's the endy poke thing, and that's the the stick that goes through it. Now the nice thing about the stick that goes through it, we can do this in two parts because we can have a fixed part, a bit like a toilet roll holder, because you don't actually um, need this bit in the middle to be loose, as long as you can obviously get your reel on somehow. So we'll figure that one out as we go along. Yeah, I mean, it is basically a kitchen roll holder. It's not really, there's nothing specifically soldery-ish about it yet, but we will get there. In fact, um, I was just about to add some chamfers, but no, we do need some design features to make it soldery-ish. So I'm gonna have a look again. I want to take something out of it from here. I like the idea. Mm. 
bear with me. So that we said was, so that's fidin. That's what we're saying in the maths is 15. Yeah, this doesn't look right because it's, there's all sorts of craziness actually going wrong here. I don't think it's doing what I quite expected it to do. Because I'm, I've got the, the the thing in front of me and I'm seeing like what's 15, what's 20. So this. Oh, you know why? We're measuring stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Todd, yeah, you got to make some of these, Todd. Um, Todd. All right. All right. I've caught this up. Let's start again. Let's start again. Right. OK, Todd. I'm going to start again for Todd. Flame it on Todd. It's your fault, Todd. Now, I kind of broke the golden rule um, when I try to do these things properly, and that's by but first modeling the thing that you're trying to, to work around. And this is the worst case scenario. So this one is 20. Hello, visitor. What do you need from me? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I had a, a brief, had a visitor who ran away. Good on them. Right, so I'm going to model the actual solder reel, which is 60. Let's call it 63 on a good day. Probably some sort of imper imperial measurement. So that's kind of what you look like. And then you put another cylinder on the end. Boom, like that. So Todd, what do you uh, what do you do about your electronics stuff? Because I do in all sorts of electronic stuff at the moment, and it's not going particularly well. So. But that's all part and parcel of it, isn't it? That's that's the elect living the electronics life. 66 millimeters. And then we're going to say it's mm, 2.5 mil thick, but on the inner edge. So we're going to pull it this way. Minus 2.5 millimeters. Yeah, and I'm happy. I'm going to say new body though. I'm not going to join it just yet because I want to make a copy of it. Let's see if we can remember how to do that. Uh, create a copy. Bing! Look at that. Doesn't have any solder on it, of course. But that is what we're trying to work with. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you could, you could prototype it. Well, you just do you need some things. I think you don't need to prototype, right? Um, I think you can you can figure out certain things. So I want to combine that and that and that, join them together, boom, and then we have a new body here. And we're going to call it solder reel, and this is the largest, biggest one I've got, the, the Peter Weller one. So I'm going to wrap that up and put it aside for now. In fact, I've got to show you this solder. This is this is one I've been using today because I've been making a whole load of boards and it's running out. But it is 0.6 millimeters, it says, but it's way not 0.6 millimeters. I'm sure of it, so I'm going to measure it. Oh yeah, no, it is 0.6. Tell a lie. So we have we have the 0.3, which is like a piece of like you can't see it. 0.6, which is the bit I use the most. But then the one I was using today, so sorry, this is the one I really wanted to show you. It's so heavy. This one is, oh, I don't know, one millimeter. And it is so proper thick. You can see it's almost like the solder you use when you do pipe soldering. So you've got a little bit of a selection, but it does seem I'm going to need some 0.6 at some point. Right. The other thing we didn't do there, there is a hole through these bloody things, isn't there? So let's punch a hole through it. Uh, booyah. Now, how many millimeters? So I've got a selection. The reason I took them out of the holders, I've got a selection. I'm just going to measure all three. This one is, uh, let's say, 21 and a half. This one is 20. This one is 20. So I think 20 is probably, you want to go the smaller one, basically, because that's your worst case scenario in this particular um axis you definitely don't want to be generous oh and look at that so when i modeled it i must have modeled that center bit <laughs> to be that so we can't actually put this in just yet so what we're going to do we're going to put it as a new body 
check this out. We're going to put it as a new body and I'm going to make it that bit longer. OK, so now it looks like one of those things that you used to do for putting CD labels on. Now in the chat, does anybody remember those things for popping the old CD labels on? Because I had one. They were awesome. Right. So I'm going to click for there. Now I'm going to do something like um, 24 millimeters. I'm not sure how big the actual bit is inside on the solder reel. They, they can vary because you can get the light solder reels actually have really wide ones that go. In fact, I can show you. They're like this. They're really shallow. You see where the hole is and they're the back. They've got like this big old gap. So you're not really getting much solder at all. But I'm going to go there and I'm going to say that is a new body. And just to be sure, I'm going to hide that one. So now, basically now we've made that bigger. So now you have a, a bigger solder reel. You can see that there. And then we're going to do some maths and we're going to say, this is the target. This is our tool. Cut it out. Boom. So now we have something that looks a bit more. Well, should look a bit more. <laughs> Why? Why are you not looking like a thing? Okay. Um, right. Well, that should have a hole through it, but it didn't. So let's all just combine all these bloody things again. It's not working out for me today. Okay. There's a lot of this. Make, making mistakes. Right, let's punch that through now, finally. <laughs> there you go. That's your solder reel. Right. I'm going to call it solder reel. Everything is based on that now. The whole design. Hey, uh, Todd. Todd, Todd, Todd. Yeah. Well, look. These are. This is a, a custom board that I'm working on. And look at that processor right there. There you get your ESP 32W Rover. Nice. But yeah, that's what prototyping ends up looking like when your board doesn't work right away. And then you have to start trying to debug everything. And you can see here the onboard CP2104 USB chip, as in the previous videos, didn't work. So I've just gone FTDI232 module. So I could continue testing, but I think we're going to be on to a V2 board pretty damn quickly. Right. But I digest. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to create a... Uh, I'm going to go primarily with a cylindrical design because I kind of think you want your solder holder roller boulder um, to look kind of neat. So if we've got that 66, so if we make that 60, 76, I kind of feel it needs to be a bit bigger. I feel let's round it to 80, shall we? That's good. So now we've got our 80 millimeter looking thing. And we're going to say it's a new body. Look at that. I don't know why it sort of fit on the inside, but that's definitely not where you want it. But I'm going to go with mm, a centimetre thick because I want it chunky. I'm, I'm talking about something industrial here, so I'm going to go with that. But I'm not going to keep it there because for me that would be madness. It would have to at least be boom. So that's where it would start. And then I'm going to add... Two mil tolerance each side. I think that's about right. So we're going to do minus 13 and a half, minus 14 and a half is what we want. 14.5. Booyah! Right. Oh, we're getting somewhere now. Uh, yeah, um, Todd. Oh my gosh. Troubleshoot, troubleshooting that stuff is interesting, but rewarding when you get there. You have to like the hunt, don't you? Um, there's days where I don't love it and I just want because these are my designs at the end of the day right so if something's cocked up it's my fault but sometimes I need it to work because it's it's something for work and you just need it done um, so the hunt can be fun as long as there's an end in sight and unfortunately for me for one particular thing 
uh, I wasn't really able to finish the hunt because of, uh, you know, I had to finish the thing. So I might have to just let it go and just bin, bin a chip. That was part of my you know, design choice, um, which is not pleasant to do, but you know, it's, a, it's a constant balancing act. Um, <laughs> have you had lunch? Would like curry and rice, chicken. Do I want chicken curry and rice, guys? Answer down below. Mm. What would I have for lunch? I think I want a cheese toasty though. Hey, Pink Mouse. Had a lot of bread today though, so don't know too many of the old bread carbs, processed grains. Rice might be good, so I'll say yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not indeed? Right. Oops. It will soon be chicken rice curry time. Liking that idea a lot. So, so we've got our basic uh, toilet roll holder shape going on. So I think we're going to just copy that over because I'm, I'm fairly happy with that already. You know, I'm... Uh, you can spend a lot of time making something look fancy and by Jove, you should. Yeah, and that's what really makes something look like a product versus something that's just that you've thrown together so you can get on with the job. But... You can do a lot of that afterwards. As long as your basic design looks cool, you can embellish it any way you want. So that is looking fine. And then what we want, again, the centimeter is so thick. Don't get, you know, when you see this, this is insanely heavy duty. But remember, I'm, I want to make this once and for all. Um, if you are making it for your desktop use, don't make anything as thick as this. Well, or do. As long as you just want it to work forever, which I do in this case. So that's, see, so look at this. This is five mil. That would be a whole centimeter, it would be down there. I'm going to make the base five mil. I think five mil is fine. I'm not going to go bigger than five mil, no way. We're going to pull that over to there, and this will magically join those bodies together in union. Let's go. Bang. And now they are joined. They are adjoined on this accursed earth. Um, so uh, we will work out how we're going to do the whole thing at some point, but not just yet, because I'm I want to do the the easy low hanging fruit first. Now we have some options here on the solder extraction mechanism. So. Either we build it inboard. Let's let's just do a quick. I'm just going to set something down for a measurement, right? So I want to see how much we got there. That we got eight mils. Yeah, we can bring this inboard. Um, she's so fine. I think four mil is good. I think, for example, if we brought that in four mil, you're going to like this. Not a lot, but you'll like it. Mm. Now, I haven't really thought about how 3D printable this is, by the way. <laughs> so far, we don't have any features that are not easily 3D printable from the base. Although this feature might make it hard to load. Let me think about... Ah. I, I don't like what it just did there. It pasted something before I had a chance to really review it. That's not quite what I want. So let's see if Control Z works. It does work great. So you still want to be able to take this reel out. And it, depending on how you mounted it, you're going to have trouble. So I'm going to give a little bit more room. I'm not giving maximum amount of room. If you screw it to a bench or something, you've got to make sure that you can still access the old reel. But I think we need to go anywhere here. I want to go four mil, and you see that center of that is too. You, it would work great, but you don't need to go that high. Um, I'm going to go to the bottom of the reel, and I'm going to go four mil. Let's round it to thirty mil up. Keep it even, Stevens. There, that's better, much better. <laughs> um, Todd, I'm I'm on something, and we yeah. We've had a lot of good minds now, right? Try to work out the issue of something and we've not been able to do it. And that's actually causing quite a lot of distress. So I think I think we're gonna 
just leave it be now. So we, this basically is a channel for letting your solder come out. And you can see it on sort of designs like this where you've got this little runway and you've got a little nozzle. And we're not going to go quite for that because, of course, you can have a super massive reels in this. And I don't think you really need it like how that's designed. So I'm going to I'm going to have my own flavor of that. So I'm going to come in on this plane and uh, that's the centroid. Bear with me. I'm going to go. Oh, he's doing it from I two, three. I think that's what I want. Let's see if it is. Boosh, puck it through, puck it through. That's not even a word, is it? Puck it to puck it. Yes, let me have a look from the front to see if I like that. Um, I think that window is not where I want it. So there's another way we could do that. Let's, again, let's choose the plane. Decide where we want our window. Where do we want our window? Um, for argument's sake, let's say we're going to do something like that. And I'm kind of worried about the measurements of it because it's a 60 and a half. Why are we getting a half in here? Let's not worry about it. You won't notice it in the print. And what we do there, we'll make it a new body, but we will still pull it through as if it was a cut, but it's basically a new body because we're going to use it as a tool body. So when we see it from the front, when you print this, you've got to remember, even though this window might be centered between those two bits, top and bottom, you're seeing an invisible line. And to the eye, you'll be seeing that window in relation to this whole face. So what you need to do is potentially bring it down. I mean, you could work out where that center is if you want, but mm, to my eyes, oh, I'd say that's, oh, oh, you know what? Let's do this. Okay, <laughs> that helps, right? So if you're gonna go in the middle of that thing, and again, there's not much in it, like I say, when you when you make this and print this, it's going to look even. But to my eyes, that looks good. Let's oh, <laughs> it's there. Don't worry. We're going to turn the hidden edges back on. Right. So let's just see how close we were by just doing some measurements, basically. So from there to there is 12.75. Exactly what you'd want. Nice, even <laughs> number. <laughs> And then from here to here is 13.044. So perfect, basically. Perfect. Who's, who's what's happening? More, more lunchtime questions. So that we're going to do, we're now going to take the target body as this, the tool body as this. We're going to do a subtraction. And now we have a window straight through it, a window through to your soul. And I am going to start doing some stuff to make this look groovy because I don't want to forget it like so and you're going what is you what are you doing Luke we're doing you know those look at that mm. oh hello no looks like it's having a bit of trouble but I think that that looks satisfying enough and it's nicely 3d printable so you've got a little window a little aperture shove that through now the only downside of this is that peg we're going to have to make a 3d printable peg to go through it it's not really a downside it's just something you're going to have to do um let's just have a look at this shape though structurally i think that's good we're going to fit some holes here in the bottom so you can actually screw it to something too that will happen shortly so i think let's do the uh, hole because there's a hole in my heart, it can only be filled by you. Right. We want it to be. Hmm. What do we want it to be? I think we decided that we were going to go for something like a 12 mil. How about 15? 15 mil peg? Yes. Okay. Let's do 15. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a 15 mil peg. You saw I cancelled that. So we're going to make the hole 16 mil wide. 
give it a mill of tolerance. And that probably won't be enough, but let's give it a mill. So we've got a hole that goes right through everything, which is good. And then we're going to make a peg to go through all of that in a sec. And that's a separate item, so we don't really have to worry about that right now. So let's have a think about these holes we want to put in here. Now you do have a holio tool, so which is great. I'm never really sure how to nicely set this, but let's try. Uh, extents distance, okay. So how do I draw this? Um... <laughs> Sketch points, mm, face. I, I, yeah. So, as, if you're chamfering these, you can use this whole tool, right? But if it's just me doing it normally, I would use the old cylinder tool, and I would just pop it there and say three point five mil. That's more than you need just most holes for a screw. Remember, this is PLA or something, so you're not going to even have trouble making something bigger. And then I would say that's a new body. So that's like my screw hole now. And then if you're keen, so depending on your eye, you could either use the regular rectangular pattern tool and copy it four times that way. But for me, I would just say do this create copy and uh, hopefully work it out where it's going to go. Uh, again, if it's something that needs to be accurate, use all the measuring tools. If it's this, who cares? That looks close enough. Um, honestly, sometimes you can get hung up by these tolerances too. And a lot of the manufacturing processes now are totally automated. They don't care. There's not a machine operator. And you're going to say, why did you choose, you know, point something, something? They don't care. So don't waste your time with it. So now we're going to do target body, tool bodies, one, two, three, four, and then boom, there's our holes. And do you want it, if you want it, yeah, you can do all sorts. Let's just show you. You could, we're going to go to modify, mm, chamfer, one, two, three, if you just want to do some sort of counter sink rather than the pan head, you could do it that way. I wouldn't really bother normally because we're talking half a millimeter at best. Oh, thank you. Thanks. And that's that's curry time, by the way. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> So you can screw that to your counter, screw that to your, you know, drawers or whatever you've got it on. I'm going to do the peg in a sec. I think it would be nice just to add the little doodads here to match our opening. So that should work one and a half mil. We don't need any features at the back. I think that'll be just plenty strong enough just to print 3D print normally. Let's get that peg done and we're gonna probably be finished. But I've got something in mind with the peg. I've got a bit of detail, so don't worry about it. That, that'll be interesting enough on its own. Right, so we said the peg was gonna be 15 millimeters. Uzi 15 millimeters. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I didn't really want to put it there, but you might as well see how I would uh, get work it, work it out. So now it's clearly too long, but you do have a mechanism for that. You've got extrude and you can bring it in like that and that will bring it into the exact face dimensions that we want. So look, there you go. So that's your peg. But I think it should have a little feature on it, like a little no knobby dobby knobby on the end. Oh, I'm just trying to think now. Do we want to try to make it screw in? Hmm. 
Let me just have a bit more sustenance here. Yep. Mm -mm. That's helped a lot. So we're going to push that in the end. Three centimeters. Three centimeters is the most appropriate knob diameter. And I think a millimeter, 10 millimeters rather deep. A single millimeter would have been quite uh, shallow. Now, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking with curry. Oh, Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. There's method to this madness. I've, I'm making the knob a bit wider. <clears throat> Let's pop that there. I want that two minus two and a half mil. So I want to basically have a centimeter of exposed knob, and that's what we're doing. I'm just going to bring that in for now. I really don't know what we're going to do on that far end, but for now, I think we're good. So this whole thing here is the knob, And this is the holder, noddy holder. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the knob over the bit where it's going to go, which is right there. We're going to do a mathematical operation. We're going to say this target body, which is the holder. You can hide the solder reel, actually, that you don't need to see it. Um, the tool is the knob itself. But I'm going to say keep the tool. So you want to keep the tool when you're done. So basically, I'm saying minus the knob part out of that shape. But I want you to keep the tool. So you can see we still have the knob. Be all like, why did you bother doing that? Is that, is that how you sound? Why did you bother doing that? Well, I'll show you why. Because when we move that away, you get a nice little feature here. You see that little feature, that little recessed feature? So that's your good, like, knobbage area. And you could have um, basically done it with a cylinder. And in fact, I'll show you that because I kind of want to do it again. So I'm going to hold that, click that there, click that center. And remember that was 30 mil. I'm going to go 31 millimeters, right? Because I want to actually give it a little bit more tolerance. And then we're going to have to try to, how far did we go? It was two and a half mil. So if we go from this side, you'll see it better. We want to go in two and a half, so minus 2.5 millimeters. Boom. OK. So that's how we know everything's going to fit nicely in there. Now, the end. How do we make the, uh, the end fit a bit better? Well, that's going to be a bit more trickier. Mm. Putting a thread on would have been amazing. Well, I'm not going to lie. I don't know how to do that. But we still have options. Mm. Why don't we put a keyway on it? So that'll be a bit of fun, won't it? So what we're going to do, hmm. we're going we're gonna to have a look at this on this end, and I'll show you what I mean by keyway. Um, I'm going to create a shape on the end here, which is really just... Mm, mm. Give me a sec. Five millimeters. Yeah, exactly. Pink mouse, you got it. Pink Mouse is in the house. You've got it. Exactly that. A bayonet fitting. But I'm not quite sure how much I want, how big I want to make it. And it's kind of weird because it's, it's, uh, hmm. You want it big enough that it's, you know, you've got it on there, basically. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to inboard the bayonet. So it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to make the bayonet four millimetres. 
but I want to have it in a five millimeter slot, basically. Exactly, something like that. So, hmm. we do need a quite an accurate height, though. Let's just—I just, just want to check something. Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll work that out. Six millimeters. Um. So I would say on this end, we're going to make a, a rebate as well. That's going to be, I guess, more or less the same actually as that other thing will be fine. So I'm going to make it whatever we have there, 31. I'm going to make it five in. I should do the trick, shouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you want to make sure it doesn't unlatch uh, itself, but I think it should be okay. You can always put some, you know, stuff in to make it a bit more bitey, can't you? Hmm. Right, and what's cool is I think we can actually just use the keyway itself to cut its own uh, groove. We're gonna do, we're gonna do some machining. Rock. There we go. That's where that needs to go. <clears throat> oh, I, I realise I haven't like hit save for a while. Or ever. Okay. Mhm. Mm but we know that's not going to work right now because it's not quite in the right place for the tooling. So if I pull it here. Or this this edge is be fine. We're going to move it there, and then I'm going to say, take that, take that, cut it and keep the tool. Bang. Okay. And then I'm going to say, move this back to where it should be, which is here. That's fine. And then I'm going to say again, click. Damn you, click. Let's get rid of this out of the way altogether. Now you can see we do have something that appears to be the keyway. But what we're going to do is we have to. Let's see if we can. Sometimes this works. Mm, did it work? Yes, that did work. So you just click that face. It's. If you're lucky, it can actually just do that because it's flat and it knows what to do. But I think that looks quite good. I mean, it's going to be a tight fit now. So either we make the hole bigger. Hmm, which we're going to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if I recall, we didn't add any tolerance on this round bit of this hole, which is nice because that means that peg will actually sit in quite nicely. But I don't want the keyway to get in the way because that would be horribly annoying. So, we, so we're going to select. Can we select multiples of these? Hmm. Not really. Right, that's fine. Half a mil. Yeah, that's what we want. Whew. Half a mil, please. I love what it's done there. That's good. Don't worry, we'll fix that in a sec. Half a mil. So what you could have drawn is is a rectangle that is basically dimensionally half a mil all around, a bit more aggressive, and, and do that. But we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Good. And if you go online and see the tutorials, there's all sorts of ways you can you can achieve this in lots of different ways. But just do it the way you want, or you're familiar with, or comfortable with. Now. Remember that trick with the delete key? I'm going to try again, but it might not work. But it did. Good. Oh, no. When in doubt, select it again. Now that's looking good. Hey, uh, scruff, scruffy looking RGB. Which um, Famicom mod video? There's so many of them right now. Hmm. Speaking of Famicom, 
More boards are available, but look at that desktop wallpaper. Mwah. Mm -hmm. If you've been waiting for a Famicom board, now's the time to get one because they say pre-order right now, but I've actually just finished making a few extra. Mm. While I'm chewing, I'm covering my mouth. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Struffy looking RGB. I really appreciate that. Um, I think there is another feature here. We could try to make sure that that keyway goes in a bit nicer. Oh, no, don't do that. And sometimes on radiuses like that, you won't get the result you want. <laughs> um, yeah. Um... Yes. Let's have a look at that. I'm not quite sure that's what we want, but I think it'll work. We're not adding material, we're removing it, so it's probably okay. I mean, it's got to be better, right? Looks okay. Now, I want to just think about this in terms of 3D printability, because we haven't actually done that. The peg looks good. Although I'm going to add a, knurl a knurling feature, or at least try to, in a sec. Mm. This bit's relatively 3D printable, because how, how you probably 3D print it is just sit it like that. But you will need support, and it will probably put some support in here, okay? Which you should have good access to to clear out, so I think that's okay. Oh yeah, I'd print it sitting down, just exactly how it is there. This peg, whew, hmm. again, I'd probably print it sitting on its base on this bit, but it will be stronger if you actually print it this way. But you have a lot more support to deal with, but it will probably snap off in one nice piece. So again, options. Hmm. Pink mouse, that's probably a good idea. Again, we've got some quite nice 3D printers ready to come on pre-order. That give amazing print. That look like um, SLA. So I'm not really, to be honest, I'm not a bit bothered about the quality too much. This is gonna come out great anyway. I mean, we're talking very fine details. With this, those bevels are like a millimeter and a half. I mean, you won't see it even. Oh, it's fine. Um, okay, now you've got options. So if you're gonna print it that way, you could try to do some weight saving features or, or time saving features to reduce the print time, but I wouldn't bother doing anything like that. I think it's gonna be fine. Let's have a look at this end. Now, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it, but, there was some interesting things. I'm just going to try some stuff. So I'm going to say here and point five millimeters. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I watched Tenet last night. I thought that was good movie. Bloody good movie. So if you haven't seen it, go watch Tenet. New body. Okay. Now there is a way to radially copy things, I'm sure. You see this mesh tool here, rectangular pattern? In fact, look, it's weird. It's not even in this menu. You have to select it from here. But let's just see what we get. Yeah, um, I'm going to keep looking. What about Revolve? What did that do? Mm, axes. 
Not convinced. Revolve, sweep, emboss hole, thread. See, that would have been interesting to try. But not today. Pattern, that's it. Circular pattern. Hey, Floating Fat Man, how the hell are you? Hmm. You know what, Floating Fat Man? I want to speak to you about an anime. I'm glad you dropped by. I am all about cells at work right now. And by me, I mean my kids. What does this do? Does this add more? No, just check. Yes. Yes. Oh my. Mm. Mm -mm. So knobbly. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to go with that. Look at all those knobs. I say knobs, <laughs> nobbles. So I wonder if we can do a group select to say combine. Will that work? Combine. Boom. Yeah, Cells at Work. I think it's a super fun show. It's like I want a Cells at Work t-shirt now. <laughs> oh, man. That is gorgeous. I, I defy anybody on this stream right now, all five of you, to, to comment otherwise. I think that that knob is a thing of beauty. And um, I think, Pink Mouse, you would appreciate it the most being a 3D printing guy, that that's going to print nice. Mm -mm. All right, pardon me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now, there is something I like the idea of. I'm just going to explore something. So for me, as a V1, this is done. So please comment in the chat if you disagree, because I'm, I'm happy to hear your opinion on it or if you think there's something else that it needs. But <clears throat> I like the idea of something to stop the solder from unspooling itself too much, like a solder break, which I know might be asking a lot for a 3D printed thing. <laughs> it's a pretty knob voting fat man. And it might require a spring or something annoying like that. I don't like to add things that require extra hardware usually. But I want to see if there's an optional way to do it. I mean, there's an obvious simple way of putting a piece of thin um, rubbery felt material here, you know, over this aperture. So it's literally when you're pulling it through, you're pulling it through like a slit of rubber. So that could be nice to do, um, but inst I wouldn't add mounting holes for that. I would just glue it on the back. So I don't think I would need to fit. You know, you could say, OK, well, why don't we put a little um, beveled edge and a little slot for that thing to go in? But I don't think we will. Now, we could come up with something mechanical, like a little a long, a very long cam. Let's have a little think about that, shall we? Again, we don't know if we're mounting this upside down or it's on a desktop because you could have it either way. Uh, hmm. So you'd have to mount this little cam bar uh, one way or the other so it could actually use gravity to, to shut against it. I don't rightly know. But let me have a little play with this while we are thinking. Look at this. So that is your knob inserted, yeah? And then what you're going to do is go... No, 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 don't do that. That's the wrong, that's the wrong knob grab point. <laughs> let, me, let me grab it by the right one first. Yes, here. Clink. And then that's going to be locked into place. I like that. I like that a lot. Do we want a knob stop? So you go chunk. 
it's in place and then when you rotate it back so you could you could do it so that you can't over knob it but that will be very annoying to 3d print so i'm going to show you something so i'll give you an example you could put a stopper here hmm you see what i mean you can put a quarter circle back in so it can only do that i love that idea but the problem is when you 3d print it you're going to have to clear out that support so well it'll be a right pain in your knobber knobber and you're going to regret doing it um, for something that's so easy to implement by just drilling <laughs> a small peg uh, so let's explore that idea of just placing a small mm, a small hole so that you can put a screw in so let's look at this again so I'm going to hit that there so let's say you had a screw here on the right, okay? Uh, yeah, a spring-loaded thing. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking pink mouse. But again, what's a common spring that you'll have lying around? There's not really anything. Um, so let's just I'm going to just going to explore this screw thing for a sec. So you've got a screw there, so it's going to be like, no, I can't turn it that way because the screw is going to be, you know, the end of the screw is going to be there. So it's going to turn this way. And it'll turn all the way till it hits that screw, which is actually pretty good. I mean, that's fine. But then, um, then you're going to screw it all the way back to undo it. I kind of like that idea because that. Now, if you're pulling the solder out the front, it's going to turn it this way. It's going to turn it clockwise on our screen. So let's say you've done that. You've got that there, but you turn it clockwise. Bang! This is undone itself. So you want the screw to be on the other side. So you want the stop to be there so that's against the grain so that's good I've got um, God, he's making a lot of noise outside peg just a tractor with a trailer going by so um, okay so we've got rid of that now so we can have, have a look you know what maybe it's not so bad to 3d print that stop to be honest we don't have to make it fancy I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just uh, consider it. You know what we haven't used. Let's try a sketch. Because they're always fun and unpredictable. Right. So we're going to go for a line. Let's see if we can get this now. I want to go from here. here that's good I'm gonna go from here to here now I'm just going to use my imagination because <laughs> you basically want a line that's cutting here so that's about there and then I'm just gonna again these features are so fine that it doesn't matter if it doesn't look quite right because in the print it will be okay I'm going to say finish that sketch. You'll see that it looks like that, which is good. And then we're going to extrude that sketch back like so. And then just join it. Bang. Let's have a look at it. So your keyway is, remember your keyway already had the tolerance built in. Now I don't I don't think that bit is great. <laughs> but you'll see it's actually surprisingly difficult to fix that, but we can and I will. And I'm going to do it looking at it this way, which is fun. Um <laughs> let me grab another glimpse of that before we yeah, that's where we want that. That's where we want that. And we want this to go all the way up like that. We want it coming through like that and it's going to be a join there well, that wasn't too bad but you know it was it was you had to think about it so let's now put that part back in which is our peg so there's our our peg and we're going to rotate it round and now i think there are tools to to test this where it will actually stop by itself but you can see oh look my angle was rubbish 
My angle was rubbish. You're rubbish, Doctor A. You're so crappy. You're so crappy. <laughs> That's how we talk. That's how people who look at the channel are talking right now. So let's just get this. So that's 130, I think 127 degrees. No, 126. Sexy. Right. So uh, I am going to continue to do something. Um, so I'm going to now take the target body as that, the tool body as that, and cut it and see what happens. Oh, I wanted to keep the tool. Undo. All right, let's do this again. Target body as that, tool body as that. Keep the tool. Boom. Now let's disappear off that peg. Let's see what we look like there. Oh, I like it. I'm going to go there to there. I like this a lot. Now, let's bring her back and test it out. Chink. So we're going to like, oh, hang on. Whoa. <laughs> What's he done? I'm like, am I half a degree out somewhere? Yeah. No. Let's just, right. That's our starting position. So then you're going to turn it and it will go right round till bang. It hit. Remember, we measured it so it will hit, but it will hit about there. And as you're pulling the solder, it's coming around. It will just pull against that. So even if that's loose, it's going to stop it. And then when you're done, you're going to reset it back out, slide it out. And it'll be easy to slide out because it's going to hit there. So you'll know you're where you should be. And jobs are good and great. So I think, I think we're getting there. Now, if you're printing it on its end, this thing, by the way, what you can do again. You could fillet it or chamfer it, whatever you want. But you can make it a little bit easier to shove in that hole. Oh my god, what did I click? Bugger. All right, let's start again. <laughs> and I'm going to hold, hide that. OK, let's do this again a bit more carefully. It's the old curry hiccups coming through. I'm going to blame those. Oh, I think a full mill. Yeah, I think a full mill. Boom, I like that. So that's our peg. That's our holder. And that's our solder reel all in action. I do believe that will work. Now, if you want to, you can just kind of roll these edges, make them all smoothified. I mean, we can do that now. Why not, I suppose? It won't necessarily come out too strongly in the print, depending on what we choose, but by Jove, we're going to try. Okay. Oh, yeah. That. That looks good. Mmm. I like what I see. Um, so I'm going to keep that. I'm A-OK -okay with that. And we could do the same for our aperture here. Um, that will... Strictly speaking, I suppose that would help something. I'm just going to do the outside. Ooh, yeah. Booyah. That, that would be good. Now, you do have the inside face you could do, but you're going to lose material. Uh, yeah, we, we can afford it. To be honest, the inside face will cut itself <laughs> if it's spending on the material, but we did a mil and a half. Was it one mil? Let me just check. No, I think it was one mil. One mil was fine on the rolling ball. Ah, hmm. But can you do something similar to the end of your knob? I've not tried. Oh, yeah, that would be a lot of work. And does it even make sense? No, it doesn't. It doesn't even like that idea of it. I just feel that the knob has got is too barren and featureless. It will look... See, this is remember that difference we were saying about making something look like a product and something looking, you know, meh. It's not about really functionality. A lot of this stuff. I mean, it's functional at this point easily, but you might just say, well, um, it should have a fifteen millimeter 
rebrighten it. That is uh, two mil deep for no reason, no real practical reason other than it will look more like a knob. And I'm going to get rid of that because that's hard. To, that'll mess up 3D printing. But you know what I mean? If you just add loads of little stuff like that, it starts looking like it's intentional. I guess if you're making something that's injection molded, who cares? It's free. As long as it can come out of the mold, you can add all sorts of like weird shapes and stuff and make it look technological. I mean, if, if for example, for this one, Huh. Again, shall we just add something? Yeah, go on. So if we take away the peg, take away the... Uh... Huh, what? <laughs> What's happened there? Something has happened. Something's happened. Happened to me. My friends say I'm acting peculiarly. Right. Um, we didn't take into account, by the way, the knobbly bobblies that we added, which is fine. So I'm going to come out mm, 33.4. Yeah, boom. Let's uh, let's clear those out. That's kind of cool. That's like a locking mechanism, isn't it? If you if you if you actually got that done with the keyway and a high tolerance, it would lock itself in a very cool way. But okay, right. So that's not the bit I was going to add there. The bit I was going to add is to say, well, you could add some go faster stripes on this. So let's add those so it will go faster. This is the sort of thing you shouldn't eyeball, by the way. But I have. I might not keep them. But yeah, if you've got... Um, <laughs> Todd's asking a really good question there. Um, Todd, maybe. Um, I'm hoping so. But that's a bloody good question. That is literally the sort of good question that uh, people should ask. Todd, let's get back. Don't forget it. Make a note of that in your brain and remind me please so the type is bodies objects that axes how do i select this as an axis no that's not what i want object that axis yeah that oh gosh that does look good yeah yeah that's going to be infill action going on but i think it's worth doing right todd i'm almost at it don't worry we're almost at it let's just get back to this i just want to finish this before we get going it looks a bit like a fishing reel now doesn't it Zzzz. I'm trying to remember who made fishing reels like your shimano right get that going on Tool bodies. One, two, three, four, five, six tools. Keep the tools. No thanks. Bang. <laughs> yeah, that's looking nice. That's looking nice and sexy. Now, before we go further, again, Todd's going, no, no. You must complete your mission, Gandalf. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We've got a few more on the other side. We want that one millimeter radius. It was foretold. Oh no, look how many clicks I've got here. One false click. And it could be all over. There we go. One millimeter. Yes, right. Now, Todd. Todd asked a very good question. If you got that and you got that, will your bayonet fitting <laughs> fit through it? <laughs> Probably not. Now, we did um, we did a thing where we modeled this solder reel to be the smaller type that we measured. 
So I think we are okay. Todd, I think we're okay because we're going to do a thing. We only have to... Um, just one second, Todd, one second, Todd. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we need to do. I just want to make sure I do the right thing. I wonder how that measures up as a face. Oh, it's so confusing. Right, hang on. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think you can make that work. Yeah. Oh, Todd. Todd, you're killing me. You're killing me with that good bloody idea now. You're making me want to change the design to do that. What a numped hole. What? Oh. That's a nightmare. Is that right? <laughs> now, the way Autodesk stuff works, you see at the bottom, there is a timeline here. Oh. Okay, maybe that way. <laughs> you can see it. We could go back in time. I'm not going to play with the keyway. Um, I think that'll just work. <laughs> um, will it be as good? I don't know. Will it work? Yeah, I'm sure it'll work. But how well will it work? I don't know. Um, I think that's going to be fine. It's just a little bit less knobbly than we wanted. Um... Am I loving it? No. Do I want to do a V2 right now? I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> he's been a bad Todd. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I can't. I want it. Oh, oh, shit. All right. I'm going to finish my last bit of rice that's on this plate. And I'm going to think about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it while I'm secretly fuming in my head about this. Um, <laughs> you know I've eaten rice for like 40 years. If you don't like it, then lump it. Right. Hmm. What do you think, guys? I think we got to change this. Okay, <clears throat> but I'm not going back through the timeline to do it, but, but no buts, I guess that's it. If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, but that's not going to get us, uh, well, Pink Mouse, we went for a uh, solder reel diameter that um, basically would be compatible with most stuff. So I'm going to get rid of this. Um, let's basically patch this back up. What we want to do is undo everything we've done. But what I'd rather do, instead of going through the timeline, I'm just going to repair it as if we're doing an additive manufacturing now. So we're just going to pop that back in. Pop it to where it needs to go, which is there. And it was like it never happened. Oh, right. <clears throat> but this bit will be interesting. I'm I'm not going to have any uh, doubt on that because we're going to have to make this. We have to be a bit clever because we don't have as much material as we had on the far end because we're already uh, two and a half mil down, if I'm not mistaken, on this. Not that we have to be. You know, we could just get rid of that. I think let's consider that, shall we? For now. 
Right, so we're back to, to this, which is fine. And we've now got our peg, which we now have to repair our pe impeggled. Impeg, peg, peggle. I think that was a game I used to play, peggle, on the Xbox Live. Good game too, peggle. Right, so all we do, basically, is you're just going to cut that off. <laughs> right, so now we just have a, a cut-off peg. And we have our holder back again. And we're going to want to put our peg... <clears throat> We're going to want to in lengthen our peg, which is definitely a word that I just made up. Um, what is it doing? <laughs> what is it saying? Uh, join, and then I'm going to just hide this. So just make it that long without causing causing grief. See, it was trying to cause grief there. So that's our peg. That's fine. Let's go back to our holder while we're there. And I'm just going to make the hole for the peg, which... I, what was the diameter? Mm, well, we can see it there anyway. So let's create a cylinder and we're going to place it here and we're going to make the hole for the peg to go into. I think I think you can see we already made the hole bigger. So we're just going to match the hole on the other side, which was 16 mil. Great. Great smashing super. Cut it out. Bang. So we're, we're there. You can kind of start using this back again. Using the polygon you have as a cutout to negative extrude the... Oh, that's just too complicated, Pink Mouse. Too many, too many words. Too many words. We don't need words. Who needs actions when you've got words? Where do bad folks go when they die? They don't go to heaven where the... One... I think we're going to do one key. I think we're going to do one key because I think one key is a bit cooler. Now that we had that idea of the end stop thing going on, yeah, I want to make a, a single key. If I may, if I may be so bold. They go to a place of fire and fry. Don't see him again till the 4th of July. Dump. Dump. <laughs> right. Gonna make. So we had five before. I think we made the key like four. We made the rebet five. So if we're making the key, this is the new. I'm gonna make it a new body actually. Good. Let's do some maths type things. So that's your target. That's your tool. Keep the tool. Cut. Bang. Okay, one more. That's your target. That's your tool. Join. Bang. We should end up with three things. Oh, I kept the tool. I don't really need the tool anymore. I'm going to do another <laughs> the same thing again, basically, just get rid of it. That's the target. That's the tool. Join. Don't keep the tool. We should be back to three things. The solder reel, the holder peg. Yes. Good. Let's hide the peg. And you'll see there's a thing. Let's hide the holder. And you can see there's our little peg. Good. So far, not rubbish yet. Now, we need to actually... This is kind of getting tricky now. <laughs> we need to make the rebate for the key. So we're going to say cylinder here. Back in here. That's going to be the center. The radius is going to be basically whatever is the key plus. So that's 22.4. So we really need 23.4 if you want to go the full Monty. And let's just go 24 because that's a nice figure. Cut that. And then we're going to cut this five millimeters deep. Come on. That's half the material away. Oh, yikes. And away. Nice. Um, we don't, we've lost a reference actually because I did delete the tool. That was the uh, peg last time. Um, but we're going to just emulate that now a little bit. You could actually make the key a bit longer and it acts. It doesn't need to. It's fine. Stop adding work. Right. 
pull this back through. Doesn't really matter where. Um, I'm going to do it from this end because I can see it easier. And then you're just going to say that's the target, that's the tool. Let's cut them out. Keep the tool, please. Bang. I'm going to push it back into location. Somebody's got to do it. Click. Oh no. Click. Oh no. Click. <laughs> Where is its locator? Yeah, I think we still will have to add that um, rebate for the roundy part, but that's fine. Put that in like that. Let's going to hide the peg. And oh, hey, zoinks. Uh, <laughs> no, Todd, Todd, that is. Um, I, I, maybe we both have a bit of OCD, but we, it's it's knowing that it's wrong and you have to make it right. You can't have it wrong because that would be wrong. Look, there's your keyway. Beautiful. Right, now we do have to add a slight recess though because that is the way we designed the peg and we have plenty of material for it. So let's put the peg back. Again, we're going to go for cylinder centered around here. We're going to make it 34. Boom. OK, let's hide that. Well, let's not hide it. Let's let's see what it looks like here. Yeah. So you wanted it to be about here. Mm. We're going to have to add an extra tolerance, so we'll have to sit around three mils. Let's hide the peg. That's the cut into the holder. You're, it's not, it's not bad, right? And I, I'm not even sure on the need. <laughs> trying to talk myself out of something here. Why did we make the peg so small? Was there any reason? Because we had the peg was really big last time, but here it seems a bit small. I'm just going to look around to see why. I mean, it looks okay, like it's going to work. Don't know. I don't really know. And I think one peg is probably enough. Do we want two or one? I think you can have either. I'm not bothered. Um, I thought just one, one would work, but I think maybe... Uh, <clears throat> we're not dithering. We're designing. Dithering is a whole different type of skill set. All right, so. Uh, is it even Stevens? Yeah, it should be 22 mil. If you want to go double pegging. Are we fans of the single pegging or the double pegging? That is the question. Oh, ho, ho. hey, uh, Flank Fat Man, is it in English, by the way? Because somebody said somewhere in one of the forums that they were going to dub um, dub some of it in English, which, you know, I'm not against. It's, it's, it's a great series, but it's got a lot of action. Um, what did we say it was? 22? Oh, this is, could all go wrong. No, that was right. But yeah, I've got my um, I've got all sorts of cells I like at cells at work. They're definitely an interesting show. Okay, good. That is actually pretty good. So the holder is there now. You've got that there. I think we've actually got two cutouts. <laughs> Believe it or not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I shall check that out, Flaming Fat Man. Thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Right. Let's let's sketch. It's time to sketch. Put on your red shoes and start to sketch. Do 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 do. Let's sketch. Right. You naughty, you naughty thing. Ho, 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 ho. I like it. I'm liking this. 
yeah can we please go this direction oh yeah no boom is that done is that is that actually finished i don't think it's closed it as a polygon that's my only uh concern can i somehow convince it we're done oh no that is a closed polygon there it should be okay i mean if i say finish what will it do did it do something oh yeah no that looks like a geometry we can all get behind Bill Audie, Bill Audie, put your hands all over my body. That does look nice. I'm not going to lie. As far as stoppers go, new body. Good. Season 1 is Japanese, but Season 2 is uh, in English. Yeah, I mean, it's all right in Japanese, but it's, you know, sometimes... Now, how do I... I've never tried this before, but I want a copy of this guy, right? I'm going to create a copy. Oh, but I want to move it radially. How do you pick a rotate axis here? Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Yes, please. More beans, please, Mum. Slam them on the old plate. Got that. Got that. Bang. 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 And bang. Sit it, bang. No! I did something wrong. He did it wrong. Undo. Let's try that again. Bang. Bang. Bang, 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 bang. Was that the right order of bangs? Yes, because we have three things left. That. Yes, please. Yes, please. The Mr. Miyagi is all happy. Look at that. Jeez. He's good. We all assumed he was good. But now he's proven it. You can have that on a bit of toast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. I think it's time to test. Okay. He's going to put his little reelie in. Pop it in. Lovely jubbly. And then he's going to get his peggle. Because uh, he's doing his pegging. Get your pegging sorted. Why are you not doing it? Why are you not doing it? Why are you not doing what I want? What the frick? Oh. <laughs> We're doing that radial thing. Right. So. Again, there are things. There are tools within this that will, will show you and highlight those problems. But you're going. <laughs> pock, pock, pock. Putting that in. And then you're going to hide the polar so we can check. Look, going in nice. Yeah, it's not crashing, not bashing, not smashing. And then you're thrusting this all the way in till it hits hard. In fact, it's not going to because we've rotated it. It's not going to do that at all. It's not going to do what you want. It's going to go bang and stop dead right there. Bang, 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 bang. And you're going to go, uh oh, that's not what we wanted. You're going to go, Ch -ch 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 -ch. oh, that's definitely not what we wanted. Don't twist it about that axis. So let's let's do that axis twist. In fact, it's gone in, right? This is ready. We've pushed it in and we've twisted it right round. We've twisted it home. As you can see that there. And if we hide the solder reel, though, I just want to test, test that twisty bit. This is a pain. It's defaulting to that. We Oh, look at that. Look where its center point is. Watch this. Yeah, you're never going to want to do that. No idea why that it chose that as a default. Oh, it's doing it again. It loves this. It absolutely loves now selecting the incorrect type. That, please. Yeah. 
So I want to you imagine you've pushed it in, yeah, and now you're rotating it. Tick, 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 bang, and it's, it's just going to stop. It's not going to stop being able to be rotated, and it's doing it on both sides, on both picks. It's never going to do it. And as you're pulling the reel out, it's hitting against those end stops. So it's never, ever, 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 ever going to come out until you want to. And then you're going to rotate it right round like that. And you're going to say, Griet Mun. And then you're going to withdraw the peg through the reel. Boom. There. So. I hope, Todd, that that is what you wanted um, out of this. I think, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I think the the back office V1 is pretty much ready for three D printing. So much so that I'm happy to uh, export it, but I think I'll export it as STLs because it's no use to you otherwise. And I'm gonna upload it to Thingiverse. I feel we should do that now while I still remember to. So we don't need the actual reel anymore. Bang, that's gonna go away. Okay, um, beautiful. Now, something that's always good to do is try to sort out the origin points of your drawing. Let's check it. You know, where is zero? Where is zero? And then we're going to move everything onto that. Everything, and I mean everything, including you, Mr. Solder Holder. Right. So that is the zero if zero if bit in there. And then height wise, you see that zero? We want to have it in the right place. In fact, I'm going to click OK there. I'm going to select it again, but I'm going to select a flat face. Ah, oh, why is it such a pain in the buttocks? Every single time. Right. I want it sitting on basically the deck because there's a really good chance in your 3D printing software that if you don't have it here, <laughs> when you put it in your slicer, it can be through the bottom of the deck. And that has happened before. Now that's looking pretty nice. Oh, Floating Fat Man, it doesn't have a lead weight because it has screw holes. Because the idea of this is that you're actually going to screw it to something properly heavy. There's no material <laughs> you can 3D print with that'll be heavy enough. So you have to you're going to have to screw it to something. Right now that peg now needs to be moved so it's somewhere that's kind of 3D printable. So I don't like doing this, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. For 3D printing. Okay. Now I know you don't you can do this externally in your slicer and all of that, but you know. Those are your two pieces. So what I like to do now, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to export. Now the nice thing is you can actually export it in a 3MF, like solder holder peg. 3MF is actually really good. You don't actually have to, it imports into Cura. So solder holder peg, I'm going to export that. And it's done already, yeah? And then I'm going to do the holder bit. Export solder holder body. OK, so those are those two bits. I'm just going to check in Cura. And then what I'm going to do also is, while Cura is loading, we're going to export it also in uh, STL. But STL, it has to post process those or, or whatever it does. Solder holder, oh, what do they call it? Base, probably. Uh, what? Did that work? No, there <laughs> we go. <laughs> um, and then we'll do the peg after that. So Cura should have loaded somewhere. Oh, there it is. So I'm not sure what printer I'll use, but let's let's assume we're going to use the Chiron. And 
I'm just looking at my downloads folder. It must have downloaded somewhere. There's your peg. There's your holder. Arrange all models. And in fact, it's saying it's done the STL. So I'm just going to pop the STL on and see how that looks. Yeah. See, the STL looks pretty good too. So before I forget, though, let's close that. Again, show the peg, hide the holder, export. Now there is a way in, um, let's just do peg, in uh, this Fusion to go straight to Octoprint and those things, which I have done in the past, but I'm not doing it now because I'm not sure when I'm actually going to print this. I just wanted to check this out. Yeah, that looks totally printable. I don't see any issue there. So let's see our Thing. we do have support so let's slice it up so I'm hitting slice which is down here the button it's taking its time oh yeah look at it it's on, it's on a high resolution print 23 hours yeah you definitely don't need it at point one <laughs> uh, let's go to normal even then I think it's gonna be a long print with this this print is not the fastest <clears throat> 10 hours Jeez. Do I want to have this sitting here for 10 hours to print this? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I will print it, but I don't I'm not sure I'm going to keep those in fill settings and stuff, but it's cool that we can watch it doing it though, can't we? So these are the layers. Yeah, I mean that looks quite dense in fill for what we need. Um should we try something like a 50? What's a draft give us? Still trying to do 25% infill even on the draft, though. I think that's a little bit meaty. Five hours. Yeah, I think that'll be absolutely fine. I think print it in point three. I mean, <laughs> don't bother doing it any more than that. Now, sometimes though, you'll let's just check if you delete the peg. So that's five. Let's say six hours, right? Let's see if you did it independently. How much? How long it would take? So five hours nine minutes just for that part, and then the peg. Let's see if this is an hour. Yeah, <laughs> you don't save anything either way. Great. Okay. Nice. Good. So we do have these pieces. Now, before I shut this down, I always like to kind of return it and we'll leave that like that. Look, just to confuse and confound anybody who's looking at this, uh, <laughs> what I was up to. Um, let's, before we do anything, though, go on to uh, Thingiverse <clears throat> and upload this because that way, even some of you, anyone who's going to print it out can tell me that it got there okay and I'm just gonna sign in log in it's on another window don't worry I'll drag it across after I finish doing all of the password junk okay so here we are how do we do this again create upload a thing choose from my computer -er. right so we've got a load of junk here uh, downloads and I'm gonna put all four flavors for you. There we go. Basic information. What should we call this? Ultimate. No. <laughs> yes. It is the ultimate one, though. We all know it's the ultimate one. 3D printing. Um, solder. Solder, if you're in America, isn't it? Solder aid, soldering, solder reel, soldering station. Okay, that's good. That's fine. Summary. Print this to hold. Oh, my tinnitus has just kicked in. What the hell? It was gone. It was gone and quiet for so long. We just decided to go, yeah, tin at this time. Print this this holder to hold your solder roll. Roll steady. 
steady. Much good soldering. <laughs> this, what? Oh, hold. <laughs> Much good soldering, good, uh, easy electronic. Um, what else do we have here? Print settings. Um, these nuts. I don't know. Is it any cubics? Not even a make on here, is it? It's all just in random. It's random order. Any cubic Chiron rafts doesn't matter. Supports yes. Resolution point three infill. <laughs> 25% is fine. Okay, and how I designed this, I'm not going to bother with that. Right. This is a, da, 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 a. Oh, so design tools, that might be useful for someone. Fusion 360. Share in my group. Oh, I don't have groups. Okay, well, I agree. <laughs> I don't know why I have don't have groups. I don't know what they are. Now, is that good? Has it done it? Publish thing. Boom. Right, let's pop this this pop this bad boy in the old chat. Bang. That's the new part that we've made. Hopefully within a few hours. <laughs> it should shouldn't take hours, but it does take hours sometimes. It should appear here. And I might I'm always scared to uh, refresh it in case it's doing some sort of weird Ajax upload. So I'm going to do a new tab. But yeah, you know, it's always thinking about it. Um, and then what it tends to do, it, it tends to be doing some sort of rendering thing. And that's why it's taking time, because it will it'll do it in a, a weird little 3D renderer that you can, can grab from there. So uh, any any comments or, or things from the chat? I'm, uh, I'm kind of done, to be honest with you. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the, the process so far. I uh, Would I undo that thing? Because it's kind of annoying. Maybe. I'm just seeing if there was that, where was that rotate we did? There was a move here. What if we delete that move? What happens? Yeah, there we go. So we, we've reset it. We can save that. Anyway, I like how it saves it as a new version. Hey, Fexo, thank you. I don't, I didn't see you in the chat, but Fexo, welcome. Don't know if we've chatted before. Probably not. I haven't been online for ages. Mm. Now, floating fat man. Now you're talking. I am. Um, Use a TS100 iron and actually good holders are few and far between. So I might get myself a couple of ball bearing races and we'll, we'll 3D print like a tube type holder with a ball bearing at each end and the, the bearing race at each end. So that'll be like the heat, you know, tolerant part. And then when you put your, your soldering iron in, it will be supported at the base. But then when the tip rocks, it will also touch one of those bearing races. And I think that will be fine. Um, oh, Fexo, I only just discovered it. Yeah, YouTube is very unfriendly on my channel for some reason. And it's it's not very discoverable, um, in my opinion. But that might just be me and some sour grapes. But you can let me know. Um, uh, if YouTube uh, gives you any notifications or anything over the next, however, if you've subscribed. But yeah, no, welcome anyway. Hopefully there's some useful stuff. Now, I don't really know about these go faster holes. The go faster holes probably have cost some printing time, <laughs> or depending on if your if your support is coming off a different reel or not. But uh, I think it'll be it'll work out. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a, a wonderful remaining Sunday and a good week ahead. Uh, or I gotta say patron, but I don't I don't know. I don't really do anything special for patron, but if you want to buy me a coffee, go ahead. That's fine too. All the best guys, have a lovely time, and I will see you soon.